Hello, seventh graders, and tonight we are going to look at lesson 2-8 on inequalities and their graphs. Tonight's lesson has two main objectives. First, you will be able to graph inequalities, and secondly, you will be able to write inequalities. So we have some form up here, two problems. It says graph each set of numbers on a number line, and then order the numbers from least to greatest. So this is back from chapter one. And basically, you draw a number line, and then you draw the numbers. And I'm just drawing the number line so we can do number one here. It says uh, graph negative 3, 7, and negative 9. Now, when you graph these numbers on a number line, again, it helps tell us really what's the smallest number, what's the largest, and so on. And apparently, I just need to keep drawing. Oh, my goodness. All right. Five, six, and seven. There we go. So for number one here, I'm going to graph each one. And again, you can do it too. To graph negative three, seven, and negative nine. Now remember, um, for least to greatest, the number that comes first, the most negative, is the least. Then we just keep going towards zero and the positive numbers. So that's negative 3, then we have 7. Go ahead and do the same to number 2 now. Graph those on that number line. Negative 2, negative 10, and negative 8. And then order them from least to greatest. Go ahead and do that now. So pause the video, please. All right, so I don't, have, I don't want to have to redraw my number line, so I'm actually going to plot these numbers in red. So I need to plot negative 2, negative 10, and negative 8. So looking at the red dots, negative 10 is the most negative, then it's negative 2, then it is, or excuse me, negative 8, and then it is negative 2. So that's ordered from least to greatest. So in tonight's lesson, we look at inequality. So what is an inequality? It's a mathematical sentence that contains a less than, greater than, less than or equal to, a greater than or equal to, or a not equal to sign. So, again, it's going to have something like 2 is less than 7. Or, because we're going to need the algebra, maybe x is less than 7. And then we have a solution of an inequality. That's any number that makes an inequality true. So, again, if I'm talking about there's some number that's greater than 7. Well, any number that's bigger than 7 would work. So, x could be 8, it could be 9, it could be 10, and so on. But it could not be, for example, negative 2 because negative 2 isn't greater than 7. So that brings us to our activity down here. And it says, cross out any numbers that do not make this inequality true. And we have y is greater than or equal to 6. All right, so I want you to go ahead and go through all these ones and just cross out any of them that does not make it true. So go ahead and pause me now. All right, so we're looking for inequalities that make this, well, not true. So, for example, y can't be 1 because 1 is not greater than or equal to 6. Y couldn't be negative 4 because negative 4 isn't bigger than 6. Now, the absolute value of negative 3, well, that is 3. Is 3 greater than or equal to 6? No. So that's crossed out. Um, 7 is greater or equal to 6, so that's fine. Y can be 8 because that's bigger than 6. Uh, we have y equals 7. Yes. Again, that would be true. We have y is equal to the absolute value of 6. And again, just a little reminder, absolute value just means how far away is it from 0. So absolute value of 6 is 6. So is 6 greater than or equal to 6? Yes, so that one is fine. And then yes, y can be 100. So you should have those five left over. All right. So now what we're going to do here is graph the solution for each inequality. So we're basically going to make a number line, and then we're going to say all of these could be solutions. That's what we do when we graph these. So they say x is greater than negative 2. So I could draw myself a number line. Now I want to do a few numbers that come before negative 2 and a few that come after. So I'm going to just go ahead and go like that. There. So now I have my number line. All right, and we know we're going to be at negative 2. 
Now, here's where this situation comes in. We need to decide if this is an open or closed circle. Now, if you go off to the left-hand side, it says use a closed dot when. Well, if the sign is either just less than or greater than. So here I put greater than or less than. If that is a sign being used, oh, excuse me, a closed dot when it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So if it has that line at the bottom saying it's equal to, then you use the closed dot. But if the sign is just greater than or less than, you leave it open. So in this case, we just have x is greater than negative 2. So because it's just greater than, I leave it as an open dot. Now I need to decide what way is this going to go. And how I do this is test the point. So I'm going to test one on each side. So I'm going to test negative 3. So I look at it. Is negative 3 greater than negative 2? Meaning it's bigger. Well, no. Negative 3 is actually less than because it's a more negative number. Let's try negative 1. Is negative 1 greater than negative 2? Yes. How about 0? Yes, 0 is definitely bigger. So is 1 and so on. So I know my arrow goes this way. Alright, so that's the plan. And again, we can do these together as well. So I'm going to make myself a number line. And negative 5 can go somewhere in the middle. Then I'm just going to put a few numbers after it. Alright. Now I have to look at my sign. Let's see, I have a greater than or equal to. So, looking at this, it has that line underneath, so it's going to be a closed circle at negative 5. I'm going to color it in, because it could be negative 5. That's why we color it in. If the answer includes negative 5, you have a closed circle. And then it says W is greater than or equal to. So again, you can test a few numbers. Is negative 7 bigger than negative 5? No, it's more negative. All right, so you actually need to go that way because negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5 are all bigger than that or equal to. All right, on the next page, I have two more problems I want you to test up. C says A is less than or equal to 4, and D says Y is less than 6. I want you to make your number lines, make your circles, whether they're open or closed, and then draw the arrow. And then when you're all done, come back and check to see if you have the right answer. So go ahead and pause me now. All right, so let's check these answers then. So I'm going to make my number line. And again, I have four, then I put a few numbers bigger and a few numbers smaller. And let's see, on this one, I have three is less than or equal to four. Well, that little line at the bottom tells me it's a closed circle. So I need to find the number. K is less than or equal to 4. So I'm looking for numbers less than 4. For example, 3 is less than 4, 2 is less than 4, and so on. So my arrow goes in that, goes that direction. On this one, I have Y is less than 6. So I'm going to make my number line. And here, I have just Y is less than 6, so it's an open circle. And again, I'm looking for numbers that are less than 6. Well, 5 is less than 6, 4 is less than 6, 3 is less than 6, and so on. So it's an open circle going to the left. And again, you want to draw the arrow at the end because that tells us that it keeps going, that all the numbers going that direction are less than 6. All right, so now we're on example 2. The first time we drew the graph because it gave us an inequality. This time you have to figure out the inequality. And how you do this is first you just choose basically a variable and figure out what numbers, number it is at. So me, for A, I'm going to choose X. All right? And I know that the circle is at negative 3. So I know I'm comparing X and negative 3. So I have to decide, is X going greater than negative 3 or is it showing numbers that are less than negative 3? This is when you look at the arrow. The arrow in A shows up oh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and so on, all the way to 6. So they're showing me that X is actually bigger than negative 3. So I know that X is greater than negative 3, and it's a closed circle, so it is also equal to negative 3. So A, I get X is greater than or equal to negative 3. Looking at B now, 
Again, you choose a variable, so go ahead and do this along with me. Choose your variable. And again, I think I'm going to choose A this time. And I'm going to talk about the number three because that's where our circle's at. Now I look, all right, is it showing that A is greater than three or is it showing numbers that are less than three? And if you take a look, well, we're showing numbers that are less. So A is less than three. Now we have to take a look, well, okay, it's an open circle. So it's just A is less than three. All right, so here we have a word problem. Basically the same idea, but we need to figure it out basically using these um, words and that table. Food can be labeled very low sodium only if it meets the requirement established by the federal government. Use a table to write an inequality for this requirement. All right, so we now we're looking at the very low sodium food. All right, now that definition is what's going to help you figure out what you need to write. So again, you're going to choose a variable, and then look, it contains at most. So how would you show that it can contain at most 35 milligrams? Go ahead and try to write this one, and when you're all done, come back and check your answer. Go ahead and pause me now. All right, so let's see how you did. I am going to use a variable S because I'm, well, we're talking about salt, so I'm going to use salt for this one, or S. And I know I'm dealing with S and 35. So now I need to decide, is S going to be greater than 35? Is it going to show it's less than 35 and so on? So if you take a look, it says at most, meaning they can have 30 milligrams, they can have 32, they can have 33, they can have 34. They can even have 35 because it says at most. But you can't go 36 because that's going more than. So S has to be less than 35 or because it can be at most equal to. So S is less than or equal to 35. All right, really milligrams. That's what you should have had for this example. All right, so we're at the end of the lesson here. What I would like you to do is solve these three problems all on your own, and when you're done, come back and check it. I want to see how well you understand the lesson. And it really helps you see how well you understand the lesson. So go ahead, pause me, and do these problems. Pause me now. All right, so let's see how you did. So we have negative 7 is greater than or equal to W. Well, on this one, it could look a little tricky because they wrote the negative 7 first. My choice is to rewrite this. And what I basically do is I just look at this backwards. So I'm going to rewrite it looking backwards. So I have W, and then I look. The point is here with the mouth open on the 7. So I'm just switching it around. All right. Again, the point is on the W. So even though the sign looks different, I'm still having as W is less than or equal to negative 7. All right. So I just really switch it so the W comes first. Because I find it easier to graph that way. So, when I graph it, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, and a few numbers less than that. And I take a look. Well, I know I'm at negative 7 and I have a closed circle. So, W is less than or equal to negative 7. Well, less than is on this side. So, it goes that direction. Alright, that was number 1. Number two, writing the inequality for this graph. Well, again, choose a variable. I chose x. You may have chose a, b, or c, or something else. I know I'm at negative 30. Well, let's see. I know I'm going to, it looks like I'm increasing. So it looks like x is more than um, negative 30. And again, it's just more than because it's an open circle. Number three, a child must be at least 50 inches tall to ride the roller coaster. Writing inequality for this situation. So, I'm going to just use C for child, I think. And I know I'm dealing with 50 inches. So, a child must be at least. So, they have to be at least 50. So, they can be 50, 51, 52, and so on. But they can't be even an inch smaller. So, C must be greater than or equal to 50 inches. When they have the words at least, that means it does include 50. If it said more than 50, then you wouldn't have that equal to sign at the bottom. So that's your lesson for tonight. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a great night.